Welcome to our uh, webinar. I'm Jenny from American Hydroponics, and we are out in one of our greenhouses right now. So some of the noises that you're going to be hearing like right now are the roof bins closing, but hopefully you can hear everything going on. So just kind of want to give you a quick little look at our greenhouse here. We've got um, vine crops. We've got some NFT things growing. Um, we've got some other just babies started on this side. So, um, yes, yeah, so th this is our greenhouse, so welcome. What we're going to be talking about today is how to start a hydroponic business. Let me give you a little bit of house cleaning stuff. That is just kind of some basic instructions. If you are looking at this and you see a blue comment section on the right side of your screen, go ahead and minimize that, close that. There's some little um, arrows up at the top. We want to close that and get as full screen as possible because we will be so showing some slides with some information on them. And um, that way, if you close that section of it, you'll be able to have a better view of everything. But if for whatever reason you don't, don't worry about it because all of this will be sent to you right after this um, webinar is over. You'll be receiving a link um, to the webinar so you can review it at any time. And you'll also be, send, you'll also be receiving a PDF form of all of our slides that we'll be showing. So if you can't quite read it, if the font's too small or if something distracts you and the slide goes by, don't worry, you'll be getting a copy of this via PDF form in your email. Um, so welcome to everybody. We have um, about 100 people signed on to this webinar right now. That's the max that we take. We assume we'll be getting some questions here. Feel free to ask any questions you want down beneath the screen. There's a question section, so feel free to send those questions in. We'll try and address as many questions as we can at the end of this webinar. And those that we can't get to, we'll for sure send out uh, kind of a, a fax Q&A uh, email to everybody to make sure that your question got answered. Um, as I mentioned, there's about 100 people who are involved in this webinar right now. And um, they're from all over the world. So we have people from Pakistan. We have people from India. We have people from Jamaica. Um, we have 13 countries represented right now. Uh, we ourselves, American Hydroponics, we are located in North America, specifically in California, in Northern California, and we're in Humboldt County, Northern California. So this whole presentation, the whole idea of how to start a hydroponic business is based on uh, a North American view of entrepreneurialism. So if you're somewhere else in the world, certainly all of these concepts are valid and they're great to take with you. They may be a, a little bit unfamiliar to you, but uh, they are definitely something that you can use to start your hydroponic business anywhere in the world. Um, if anybody did not get a chance to attend this webinar and you want them to, just go ahead and you can forward this link. It will also be available on our website um, after December 25th. Because at the end of this broadcast, for everybody who's watching, there'll be some special offers just for those of you that are actually attending this webinar. There's some pretty special offers for you there. So um, let's let's continue on. So let me. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right here. Um, we're going to go like this, and that way you're going to see me um, in split screen. Okay. So um, how to start a hydroponic business. What, who we are, let me tell you a little bit about American Hydroponics. As I said, my name is Jenny, and here at American Hydroponics, or Am Hydro as we're known, we've actually been around for over 30 years. We were founded in 1984, right here in Humboldt County, Northern California, and we have been helping hydroponic growers for the last 30 plus years. So we've been at this a long, long time. Not only have we been in business manufacturing hydroponic systems for that long, but everybody who works for us has experience growing. As you can see, we have this greenhouse here, and we have two small R&D greenhouses right at our warehouse, too. And, and the employees are encouraged to go in and grow, whether it's for their family or themselves, or just to understand how we do it. Between our staff here, whether you're calling me, my, um, or Rudy, or Joe, or or Haley, or Lorelei, or anyone who answers the phone, we have over 100 years of growing experience, of actual hydroponic growing experience between us. So you're going to get to talk to people who um, don't just know 
the, the, don't just have the knowledge, but have the practical experience as well. We ship to over 60 countries since 2012, so we don't just operate here in the U.S., we operate all over the world. We have hundreds of growers here in the U.S., everything from small mom and pop, um, weekend warriors we call them, who might have an NFT 1200, which puts out about 250 plants per week. Maybe they go to their farmer's market every week and they sell at the farmer's market. And we have large multi-acre um, facilities that have you know, dozens and dozens of employees working there. And they put out 35 or 40,000 or more heads per week, plants per week. Those are the people who those, those businesses have, have started just like you're starting. They're starting with something small and they're working their way up and expanding. Um, they distribute. They sell to Costco, they sell to large grocery store chains, they sell to Whole Foods. So you can see, and we have everything in between that as well. So you can see wherever you're looking to start, whether it's something to just make a little extra money because you love gardening, you love being involved in your community, or whether it's something that, that you have several investors and you want to, to keep going and keep growing and distribute, we can, we can help you either way of those. Um, all right, so let's continue on. So some things to start to consider before you actually start your business. The number one thing we always like to tell our people, anybody who's interested in starting a business is, it's a great business to be in. It's definitely up and coming right now. Um, really great investment, but you are still farming. And farming is a lot of work. You really have to um, consider that it is an everyday job. Uh, unless you have someone, and we'll get to that a little bit later, unless you have trained someone up to, to kind of come in and check on you while you're gone, you really have to check on your greenhouse every single day. And what we like to say is you really need to have your eyes on every plant every day. That doesn't mean that you're walking through, and like in this greenhouse right here, we have 5,000 plant sites, and it's a small greenhouse. It doesn't mean that you're going through and, you know, checking every single leaf. What it does mean is that you're walking through the greenhouse and you're considering what's the temperature like, what's the humidity like, do I see any kind of a pest infiltration, do I see any kind of a disease on any of my plants, because you want to catch those things right away. Um, some, some people have said putting a webcam in might be a great idea, and while a web webcam might be super, a webcam is not going to replace you walking through your greenhouse every day, and it's not going to replace you kind of getting your eyes on the actual plants. So when you consider this, you have to consider that you are still farming. And then you want to consider what your investment, what's your involvement going to be? Are you going to be a passive owner? Are you going to hire up a grower who comes in and actually manages the plants for you? That's great. You can get a good grower and, and that's a great model. Are you gonna be entirely active? That means are you going to be the grower for your own greenhouse? What's your startup capital? Are you gonna self-fund it? Or are you planning on, on taking out a loan or getting investors or something like that? It's something to consider. What are your expenses going to be? You're going to need enough cash, like any good business, small business startup, you're going to need enough cash for the first six months to get you through everything. And again, are you going, is this going to be a solo effort with you? The greenhouse this size that we're in right now is a 30 by 96, and that's going to be something um, that one person can, can run pretty much on their own. Or is this going to be a team effort? Are you going to bring other people in and have other people working? Um, another important thing to consider before you start your business is what type of person are you? Are you a plant geek? That is, do you love, uh, you know, the whole botany and biology and the physiology of the plants themselves, and, and that really excites you and turns you on? Or are you a salesperson that loves getting out there and loves the idea of dealing right with your community? Both of these two things are great things. But in a, in a job like this, in a business like this, you really have to be both. Um, just a, a quick little story. We had one customer who was uh, loved, was a fantastic grower, grew some of the most beautiful produce, really. 
And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, so he, he, he grew some beautiful stuff, but he couldn't sell it because he didn't really like dealing with people. And, and so we went down there and said, man, all you have to do is take some of this stuff to any of the fabulous restaurants in your neighborhood or in your community here, and, and they will absolutely uh, want to buy your, your produce. And, and he just decided, you know what, dealing with the people person wasn't for him. So he sold his business to someone else. So that's something you need to consider. Are you in it for the growing aspect? Are you in it for the people aspect? Great if you can be in it for the combined aspect. That's how you will be most successful. Um, what's your time frame? Is your time frame right now? You want to be starting now immediately and, and you want to hit the ground running now? Great. A little bit of groundwork you have to do. Do you have a greenhouse already? Do you have a space for your greenhouse and that stuff? Are you looking at one to two months from now? That's a, a pretty short time frame, but something to look at. Are you looking at six months from now, right? That's ideal. That gives you a chance to um, give us a call. We can work through with you what exactly are you looking for? What does your market like? Um, what's the best greenhouse for you? Uh, what kind of system? Do you want an NFT system to grow leafy greens, or do you want a buying pop system that can grow tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers, or a combination of those two? Six months is really a, an ideal time frame. Or maybe a year from now, or maybe you've just joined this webinar to say, I'm just checking into the whole idea. No idea if it's really what I want to do, but I'm just checking into it. Well, this is a great place to start. So we have a lot of really great information to help you kind of decide that whole concept. So now, we kind of talked about before you even jump into it. So now you're serious and you say, okay, I really do want to do a business. Um, you need to do the research. And doing the research, you need to first and foremost, what will make you successful if, if there's one thing that will make you more successful than doing any other thing, it's understanding your market. Every market is unique. As I said, um, we sell around the world. And the market in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria, is very different in, than the market in San Francisco, California. Um, at, or even in Trinidad, Tobago, where we have, have growers down there. So you need to understand what your market is. And you also need to understand uh, what can you sell in your market. Local prices um, command a higher, local produce commands a higher price than, than any other type of commodity pricing. For example, if you live on the East Coast of the US and you buy a head of lettuce, of, let's say iceberg lettuce at your grocery store, 90% chance that lettuce has been shipped to you from either California or Texas and it's been shipped, it's taken three or four days to get there. And so you get it the day it comes off the truck and it's already four days old, possibly five days old, uh, but they grow it in such huge quantities that the price is much lower and, and they take much lower margin. If you buy something from your local farmer, you're getting something that's ultra fresh, maybe maybe not even hours old from the time you deliver it to the hand of your customers. And it's beautiful, it's fresh, and it tastes fantastic. That's um, what commands a higher price. So you need to really understand what your market charges. And what are some high value items that you can put into your market? Um, do you have an ethnic market? Do you have something that maybe Asian greens? You have a large market for Asian greens and there's no consistent supplier out there. Do you have a large market for culinary herbs? Maybe you have some fantastic restaurants nearby and they cannot get consistent culinary herbs. Those, those are the sort of things you want to discover when you're doing your research. And what prices are they charging? Walk around your farmer's market. Walk around your grocery store. Ask to talk to your produce manager. Um, go, go in and ask to talk to the chefs. People love to talk about what they're doing. And, and if you can just talk to them and say, hey, I, I'm looking to do something hydroponically, I can supply year-round in, in a controlled environment a consistent product to you. If I could do that, what would you, what would your wish list be? Um, again, another little story. We had a chef. We we here in Humboldt County supplied a couple of really high end restaurants, and we had a chef ask us, "Can you grow cutting celery?" Well, we've not necessarily heard of cutting celery, so sure enough, we went to our seed supplier, and they had cutting celery seeds. So we got them. 
we started growing them and they were fantastic. They grew really, really well in our NFT system. We took them to the chef and he loved them. And if you don't know what cutting celery is, it's a small plant. It looks about like, um, it's about the size of, here, let me just show you. It's about the size of, this is a cilantro I just pulled out of one of our channel. It's about the size of a cilantro. This is a baby, kind of a, has another couple weeks to go. Uh, about this size, but it actually tastes just like celery. And so you can use a lot less of it, and you're not using these big, big stocks of celery. So it gives the flavor of celery. Chefs love it. So as we um, have showed other people, walked other people through our greenhouse um, and showed them, we've had chefs come through, and they kind of looked and said, what is this? And you let them taste the cutting celery. They loved it, and all of a sudden, we start having more orders for cutting celery. So understanding what some of those high-value items are is really important in doing your research. Um, the other piece of it is how much can you sell? What's your market out there? Do you want something like this, which is, again, it's a 30 by 96 greenhouse, and it produces, um, there's just over 5,000 plant sites here and here, and it produces about 2,500 plants a week. So do you have a market for that much? Maybe you have a market for a lot more than that. So that can help you understand uh, how much really can you sell. All right, so doing your research, land and space. What kind of land do you have? Um, how much space will you really need? Will you need permit? Again, we're here in California and a very litigious state, right? So you need permits for everything you do here. Um, some places don't require that. So you need to understand what is your locality? What kind of permits will you be needing for your greenhouse? How much space do you have? Then, do you want room to expand? Um, again, this greenhouse that we're in, if you see the area over here where the tomatoes are, it's called the Gutter Connect Greenhouse. And um, what it means is when you want to expand, you're going to take a, another greenhouse just like this, you're going to take the wall off, and it's going to be connected by a gutter right up here. And so you can expand using the same greenhouse. You can just keep adding on. That's how commercial um, greenhouse growers, that's how commercial produce growers that grow in a greenhouse do it. They start with, you know, a couple of greenhouses and they just keep adding on and adding on. Um, or will you only need one greenhouse and you know that when you're going to expand, you're going to expand in another location. You might want what's called a Quonset style greenhouse and that's, you know, kind of this, this tube. It's less expensive, still absolutely efficient, absolutely a viable way to grow, grows great but you just can't add on side to side. So if you do want to expand, you're gonna to have to get a whole nother greenhouse. Um, another thing you'll want to consider is walk the land. And walk the land at different times of the day. Is a bunch of shade covering up the space where you're gonna put your greenhouse? Well, that's not too cool, right? Because your plants need sunlight to grow. They need 12 to 14 hours a day of sunlight to grow. Um, so if you're planning to put your greenhouse in some, in some place, maybe between you know, two big pieces of, or two big trees, walls of trees or whatever, you're going to have a lot of shade in there, and that wouldn't be ideal for your greenhouse. Uh, can you get utilities to this space, right? Can you get water? Can you get electricity? Can you get natural gas? These are the things that your greenhouse are going to need. So, so walk the space where you're looking at uh, putting your greenhouse and see... Uh, What's it like if you were to have a greenhouse there? Will you have adequate shade? Will you be able to get utilities there? Another thing is if you have people come and pick up there at your greenhouse, whether it be delivery trucks or uh, consumers, will they be able to get there? Is it easily accessible for those, for those type of pickups? Um, so the next thing is you really need, so you've done your research, you have a really good idea of what your market is, of what prices can be charged, how much you can sell. You have a really great idea of where you found the ideal location, where you're going to put up the greenhouse. So now you have to start getting prepared. And being prepared, you got to go through all that icky stuff, right? You need to talk to your legal team, whatever that is. You need to find a good business attorney and find out, are you going to open your business with a partner? Do you have a partnership agreement in place? Do you need to file business permits? Um, do you have to apply for any greenhouse permits? You, you need to find that all out as you're starting to get ready to start your business. And financially, we talked a little bit about it before, but really understand your costs and your expenses. 
the number one reason test, uh, companies fail or businesses fail is because they've overestimated their income potential and they've underestimated their expenses. So take a look at your um, costs, your expenses, and your potential revenue and plan for low revenue months. Plan for months when, for whatever reason, um, you don't sell as much as you expected and be sure you have a cash buffer for that. Are you going to apply for a business loan? Start doing that now. We can actually help you. We have a couple of um, customers who have used different financing vehicles. Um, we're happy to give, give those that information out if you're looking for a way to finance your, your business. So just give us a call and we can help you with that. Um, you also want to be prepared physically. Your greenhouse um, site might need to be leveled. You might need to cut down a few trees. You might need to get some um, infrastructure into that site. Uh, maybe you need to fin finalize the purchase agreement for that. Whatever it is, you need to be physically prepared to start your, uh, your business. Construction, what kind of construction really depends upon what kind of greenhouse you're going to get. But who's going to do the construction of the greenhouse? Are you and a few friends going to do it? You can hire a specialized team to come in and do it. And we'll look at that uh, in just a little bit too. Um, Nick, call us up. We can help you design your system. We'll, we'll order up your system. It usually takes between, um, you know, anywhere between four and eight weeks to design your system and to uh, deliver your system. So we can actually help you. Oh, so, so um, and what I just did right here is we have people um, who are handing me the questions so I, get, I don't have to kind of keep going through all of them right there. Um, and we'll address these questions. So one of, one of them that just came back is the FDA rules and regulations, and I'm assuming this is for the Food Safety Modernization Act. Yes, absolutely, we can help you with that. We have someone who's pretty well versed on the whole idea of the food safety. The beautiful thing about it is if you're growing hydroponically and if you're growing in controlled environment ag, which is what means it's um, CEA is Controlled Environment Agriculture, and that means growing inside of a greenhouse, growing inside of something like this. Um, something like two-thirds of that Food Safety Modernization Act don't apply to you, right? A lot of what that applies to is things like, you know, birds flying over your open fields, dogs walking through your open fields, making sure there's no dirt tracking in and out of your packing area. We don't have any of that hydroponically. So hydroponically speaking, the Food Safety Modernization Act becomes very easy to comply to. Um, and and the, last, the last piece of this before we move on is the, um, the emotional part. I mean, it's no, no kidding, no joking. It is stressful to own your own business. It's also thrilling and exciting and satisfying and wonderful. Everything about owning your own business um, has emotions attached to it. So if you're ready to jump in there and work and uh, really see the satisfaction of building something uh, with your own hands and with your family and friends who are involved in it with you, then, then owning a business like this is really an exciting proposition. All right, so what does it actually take to get started? Um, so now this is where I told you we're going to talk a little bit more about the greenhouse. And again, the greenhouse is, is growing in the greenhouse like any greenhouse. It's called Controlled Environment Agriculture, or CEA. And that means... Um, you may hear, I, I can't tell if you can hear the fans that are going on right now or you hear the vents opening up. Everything is controlled for the optimization of growing for your plants when you're growing inside a greenhouse. So that's what makes it possible to grow consistently year-round beautiful produce that you can deliver this beautiful lettuce or uh, you know basil year-round in the middle of winter you can deliver these things that otherwise might only be able to be grown a few months out of the year in your area. Um, so you might want this, again, I mentioned this is called a, a gutter-connected greenhouse. It's more expensive. Um, it's, can be, it will be engineered specifically for your location. Um, just a, for, for example, this exact greenhouse, we had a customer who was um, down in the Caribbean who wanted this exact greenhouse and, and for his whole setup. And they didn't just take this greenhouse and say, okay, fine, put this up down there. 
very different climates. Here in Northern California, we're a very mild climate. We don't really get snow. Uh, we don't get high winds. So we have, we have a pretty temperate climate here. Whereas down in the Caribbean, they have hurricanes and tropical storms. And so the greenhouse had to be manufactured, even though it was the same greenhouse, to withstand 175 mile an hour winds. And that affects the cost, obviously. So um, when you're deciding on what type of a greenhouse, some of the biggest factors that you're going to have to consider are cost. What kind of cost do you have? Or how much do you have available to pay for the greenhouse? Um, another one is what's your locality. Like I said, if you're someplace like we are, um, it's a very temperate climate. We don't have a big snow load or anything like that, so it's not a problem. And the other piece is who's going to construct it? And do, do you want to expand? Do you have um, plans that you're going to expand your business so you want a greenhouse that will expand with you? Those are some of the things that you'll want to consider when you're talking about uh, what type of greenhouse. How long will it take to construct? Again, it depends on the greenhouse. If you get a Quonset style greenhouse, um, that could take you and maybe some uh, handful of friends, five or six friends, maybe a couple of weeks, three, four weeks at the most to put up a Quonset style greenhouse. If you're going to do something like this, a gutter connect greenhouse, you probably want to get a professional crew and uh, have them come in and it'll probably take two, two and a half months to construct something like this. We, this greenhouse right here, we laid a cement pad, which isn't necessary, you don't have to do that, but we put hydronic heating in it. So those sort of things definitely add to uh, the type of people that you'll get to construct a greenhouse. Um, and again, uh, do you have utilities at your greenhouse? And are they ready to go? Because you'll have to have that for your, for your business. Next is the system. Um, as you can see, this is an NFT system. And what we see growing over there with the tomatoes in it is a vine pop system. What kind of system? And who's going to set up your system? The actual system in this greenhouse, it's two 80-foot long tables, um, would take two guys about five days to set up. Not, not super long time. Um, you can hire us. We can come up, out, come out and set it up for you as well. But you're perfectly capable of setting something up as well here. Uh, then you'll want to start your seeds. And you'll want to start your seeds actually before your tables are all the way up because your seeds will live for two weeks in propagation. And that's just a small table that you set up. It comes with the system. Um, and, and they'll start for two weeks there. So you start your propagation, you start your seeds, and then you put together your tables. And, and you'll transfer them in there. Um, then what you'll want to do is you'll want to start delivering some samples. If you don't have solid orders already, you'll want to start giving out samples of different varieties that you've done. You want to do that for two or three weeks, take them to the same people two or three weeks, different chefs, different produce managers, and then by the second or third week, you can take their order because they can see the consistency, they can see the quality, and they can see the taste of what they're working with. Um, next, again, we're talking a little bit about market share. Uh, who's your market share? Is it chefs? Is it produce managers? Um, grocery stores? Farmers market? Are you selling direct to customers in something like a CSA, which means a controlled environment? Um, a CSA is a consumer supported agriculture, which means um, you get a couple of people together, a couple, you get 20 to 30 people together, pay a flat rate right up front, and every week, they get available to them whatever is harvestable that week. So they get a variety of things. They get it every week. It's great for them. It's great for you. So that's a model where you get something direct to customers. Um, and last is the continuity of your business, right? And the continuity of really growing your business. Um, invest time and energy in talking to your customers. That's the, that's the R&D that you really want to constantly keep going over, is finding out, going out and, and listening. When you deliver, and if I were you, I would make a conscientious effort to be one that delivered these things. Even if you have a regular deliverer, um, being the person who delivered these, what's a, every once in a while, so you can talk and say, hey, how's it been going for you? Is there anything else we can grow for you? Um, is, a, is the quality up to, up to standards. But listen to your customers. Are they having frustrations? Do they like the cutting celery example? Do they you know, scratch their head and say, hey, you know what, I haven't been able to get um, baby lavender. Can you grow me baby lavender? 
He said, sure. yeah, we'll give it a try, sure. Um, and the other thing for the continuity of your business is really important is to develop new growers in your greenhouse. And there are a couple of great resources. Take family and friends. Um, for example, in, in our company here, we have a lot of people who are growers, but my 17-year-old nephew comes in and he works for us and, and he's been working for us about six or seven months. And he's able to now, because I come in and check on the greenhouse every day, so he's able to come in now on the weekends, so I don't always have to, and he can walk through and he can say, you know, there's some powdery growing or maybe it looks like there's some aphids. So that's how you develop a new grower because he loves doing this and that's what he wants to do, right? So you, you start him out. Interns from any kind of a local campus, a high school, a vocational school, a community college, a university, interns are a great way to, uh, and they work for free. It's even better, they work for free. Um, we often get interns internationally that um, call me up or email me and say, hey, I would love to come over, spend two months. If you can just put me up, I would love to come and work with you for two months to learn how to do it. That's a great way to get a, to, to learn how and to develop a new grower as well. Instructors, instructors from many of those same campuses that I just mentioned to you, they're great to have come in too. Um, so any of those things, but I would really encourage you for the continuity of your business to listen to your customers and continue with the R&D and then um, develop new growers for your greenhouse. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to share a little bit with you is we have Get Grown Bundles that makes it super easy to get started. Um, these are on our website. You can download all of the specs on our website. But these come with the greenhouse, um, with the growing system, all the environmental controls, three months worth of growing supplies. Matter of fact, this greenhouse right here is one of our Get Growing Bundles. It's everything you need. We don't manufacture the greenhouses ourselves. We partner with some of the leading greenhouse manufacturers in North America um, to design and, and to engineer the greenhouse specifically for your location. But if you go on our website under the bundles or even on the online store, you can download all of the different bundles and the specs of exactly what comes with them. We've done all of the work for you of getting everything you need together to start your business. Some of the sizes we have, for example, we have the NFT15K, and that um, produces up to 3,780 plants per week. It's a 30 by 144 greenhouse. This one, as I mentioned, this is a 30 by 96 greenhouse. It um, produces up to 2,592. And you can see all the way down to those little systems that we have that um, still come with everything except the greenhouse. They come with the technical support, on how to grow, they come with the growing supplies, they come with the growing systems, everything you need to get started. And that's actually all listed on our website, or um, you, you can email us, we're happy to send it to you. But we have two different versions of it, just kind of as an FYI, one's a commercial version, which is um, one of these Better Connect greenhouses, one's a small business version, which comes with the Quonset. It's a little less expensive and it comes with the Quonset version. So, um, that's pretty much everything for this webinar. Um, so a couple of questions. Um, we, we uh, someone is asking about financing. Um, and Hydra doesn't provide financing, but what we do have is we have partners that have worked with our customers before. They know our system. They know what we're capable of. And like a, um, I don't think I mentioned that our systems are guaranteed, the channels are guaranteed for 10 years. We have customers that have been using our channel for over 20 years and we're still using the same channel. And uh, we have a couple of different um, companies who have financed this. So if you are looking for financing, that um, they we can connect you directly with these people and, and they can help. So if there's no other um, questions, let's see. Um, here's one. Does building require dirt, gravel, or concrete for cleanliness purposes? No, you can actually do um, any one of those things. And as I mentioned, we have a concrete floor here in this greenhouse. Obviously, that's the ideal um, because it is really clean. You can um, you can just spray it all out if you need to. You can do whatever. But it doesn't have to be. You can use gravel um, in, in the Get Growing Bundles that we have. We have um, some ground cover. It covers up everything, so it's a nice, clean look that way still. 
but uh, you don't have to have concrete walls for your uh, for your ringers. So I'm not sure if there's any more questions. Oh, here's one. Um, pest control and what areas, uh, what area the acceptable chemicals can be used to fight disease. So yeah, um, that's a good question. So growing, when you get any kind of system from Amhydro, uh, we provide you with a year's worth of growing and technical support. So if you do have a pest infestation, we can tell you because we've dealt with them all, right? We can tell you what's the best way to combat that uh, particular infestation. And as far as the Food Safety Act goes, generally we recommend um, integrated pest management, which means using bugs to fight other bugs. And the most common example is we release ladybugs in our greenhouse once a month, and the ladybugs eat the aphids. And you know, the ladybugs then fly out through all the vents once there's no more food to eat. And so that's, that's what um, one way of an integrated pest management. There are lace wings that you can release into your greenhouse. There's a lot of different things. As for, for example, powdery mildew, um, something like that, we always use Armory certified products. Um, that way we know that they're safe. Uh, we know that they are less harmful to the environment. And they're certified organic. So Omri, uh, Omri is the kind of the top tier of uh, organic certification in, in the US. So we always use Army certified products, and there are lots of them out there to combat any kind of disease. So um, I think that's pretty much it. We're pretty much at the time. Um, we have uh, we have we monthly seminars. We, if you want to give us a call, a webinar, excuse me, if you want to give us a call, we can sure answer any of your questions or go on chat online or email us here. Our next webinar is called What the Heck is a Bundle? And that's one of these get growing bundles I was telling you about. It's January 19th at 1 p.m. Um, we do our webinars on the third Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. Um, give us a call. We love to talk hydroponics, so give us a call. Thanks very much. And hopefully we'll be chatting with a lot of you in the future.